The Irving T. Marshall Awards are given annually to a university and college division ECAC side of member who in the opinion of the membership and executive board has exhibited excellence in the field of sports information. First presented in 1966, the awards are named after Irving T. Marsh, the ECAC Service Bureau founder and director until his retirement in 1973. After honoring one person from 1966 to 1990, the Marsh Award was expanded to its present format in 1991. We are proud to have 12 past Marsh winners with us this evening. Please stand as you're introduced. 2017, Kevin Beatty, RPI. 2016, Jeff Bernstein, NYU. 2015, Chuck Sadowski, Bridgeport. 2014, Bill Gorman, Wentworth. 2013, Jim Seavey, formerly of Massachusetts Maritime. 2010, Ken Sherrington, formerly of Plymouth State. 2005, Eric McDowell, formerly of Union. 2004, Bill Jones, Skidmore. 2003, Dennis O'Donnell, Rochester. 2002, Dick Light, Benton. 2002, B.L. Elfring, Southern Maine. And 1997, Roger Crosby, formerly of MIT. Here to present this year's University Division Award is Brian Bury from the College of St. Rose. Thank you. You know better than to turn a uh, coach loose on a microphone. Stevie reminded me that I'm one of the few people that stands between him and Wally World, so I'll get along with this quickly. So um, <laughs> I know how passionate you sports information professionals are about Wally World. Uh, my dear friend David Alexander is uh, award recipient tonight. It's an honor to stand before you uh, and speak on his behalf. I've known him a really long time. I was only the second full-time employee at the college. David was the third. Showed up. You know, for his interview in a nice suit and a pair of Chuck Taylors. Uh, I knew then that we would be lifelong friends. Uh, I never really understood the sports information world. Uh, you work too hard, you don't get paid enough. Uh, but I started to understand a little bit better after I knew David for a year or two. Now you can read all of his accomplishments. He's quite accomplished, not just as a sports information professional, but as an administrator, a leader in our athletic department. But one of the things that most people don't know is that David is quite successful. In fact, uh, after a year or two at the college, I went to a conference in the Albany area uh, given by local professionals, and David was a featured speaker. And on the sheet, it said, David Alexander, self-made man. So I was intrigued, because he didn't tell anybody. So I said, this is why this guy can work for next to nothing, 80 hours a week, because he's self-made. So he gave this presentation, and he was uh, you know, quite enchanting, and there were questions afterwards, and there was a young boy in the front row who was eager to ask a question, and David, being the consummate professional that he's been and always is, asked the young boy if he could uh, answer his question. He said, yes, Mr. Alexander, Mr. Alexander, I need to know, you keep saying it, you keep saying it. If you're a self-made man, why would you make yourself look like that? <laughs> So David and I spent a lot of time together. I only left them behind at a, uh, at a game once. Uh, the boss got to the Jersey Turnpike before we had to go back to Philly and get them. Uh, uh, but we've grown together. And when I look at the accomplishments that David's made as a career professional in athletics, he really is something. He went from zero to one. He came to an athletic department 
uh, that had 10 teams that didn't have a sports information director. Uh, he built it from scratch uh, to 19 teams, hundreds of athletes, uh, and infrastructure internally and externally. But he's always been about the people. Uh, the process took its time and its place, but David's made a point to make his career about the people. Uh, he's passionate, uh, loyal, uh, work ethic, uh, much like all of you. Um, but the honor and integrity and the quiet fortitude uh, that he's done his work with uh, has been remarkable. And he's done it consistently uh, at a pace that I find uh, unequaling uh, for me anyway. Uh, he's been a great asset uh, to the college and to your profession. Uh, and I'll say that throughout his 27 year career uh, at the college, uh, as I call him, DA has been uncompromising in his commitment to excellence, uh, in his uh, commitment to excellence in the field of sports information. Therefore, it's my pleasure uh, to introduce to you David Alexander, my friend, uh, as uh, one of this year's Irving T. Marshall Award winners. David? Honesty, I could always count on to help me. 
by letting me know what I needed to hear, although it may not necessarily always been what I wanted to hear. I'd also like to thank all coaches and administrators at St. Rose who do a phenomenal job of recruiting and developing superior, superior young men and women. They do all the heavy lifting, not just the guy that then gets the brag about all of I still want to thank all my colleagues for their willingness to always help me, including those about the Northeast Ten Conference, the Capital District in New York, and my fellow board members who seamlessly propped up my presidential tenure from 2011 to 2012. In our parlance, that board featured a, a category of consensus all Americans. They are a small group of people that I admire and trust without reservation, and whose friendships I hold dearly. Those meetings and conference calls yielded many inspiring snapshots that I hold on to today. Some of my favorites. There are two types of people in this business. Those that get it, those that don't. Always conduct yourself as you, you were a guest in someone else's home when you are traveling with a team, because that's exactly what you are. Always remember that you, as an individual, do not comprise your audience. And perhaps most importantly, a sound work environment augments great talent. Personally, I come from a humble background. However, a sound work ethic, a sense of passion, and of doing things one way, and only one way, the right way, along with the notion that making a living doing something you love were instilled in me at a very young age. Those characteristics have certainly served me well throughout my lifetime. I also gained a sense of independence and accountability at a very young age as my father, my brother, and my sister had our lives permanently altered when my mother passed away. My sister Beth and I were mere five years old, and my brother Steve was just 11. My dad had yet to reach his 40th birthday. My only regret tonight is that my mom, and of course my dad, could not be with us this evening as my father passed away almost three years ago. My dad would have loved this evening. He would have relished your company, and I'm certain he would have engaged you in a hearty debate about the current, red, the current state of his beloved Red Sox. And he'd also be screaming, what the heck is the store of ruins again? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, my brother Steve could not make it tonight. Barbara, my girlfriend Nancy is with me, as is my sister Beth, my nephew Brian, my niece Emma, and my sister-in-law Catherine. I cannot express how thankful I am for their presence in my life, as they are all responsible for my success in their own unique way. All told, I have four nieces and three nephews. Each has brought an unheard amount of joy to my life. I've always been astounded in how different they are, and yet how similar they are. They are each carving out their own niches in very different arenas, but in the end, they are all ambitious, bright, and caring young women and men. A lot of others decide how much of that they get on their own. And well, Beth is actually my twin, and anyone who knows us, As known as in the past, I will ever know us, will always appreciate the fact that I will always be her Danny, Danny DeVito to her Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Beth, thank you for always being there. <clears throat> always ensuring that I have a place to call. And to my brother Steve, one can I ask for a finger of her brother or a more astute sounding board. So thank you, Steve. And one more thing to assure you. Growing up in the manner we did, it wasn't always easy, and the three of us had more our share of hurdles on our way. The easy path would have been to stumble over them and simply lay blame. Why were we doing all right for ourselves? I say so myself. I cannot be more proud of who you have become. You're not only my sub, my, you're not only my siblings, you're my role models as well. Hi, Nancy. Where do I begin? I guess I'll just thank you for bringing a little lunch for me a couple of years ago. This 
spots were aligned in my favor that day. Your presence has transformed me as I am at my best when you are at my side. You are not merely the prettiest woman in the room, but the smartest and kindest as well. Thank you for putting faith in me and for allowing me to enter your life and your children as well. I know how difficult the decision that was. I love you more than you love enough. So thank you everyone. I'm honored. I'm humbled. Thank you for a great evening. Remember, Mr. Peace. Thank you.